Hello, Jennifer from Scrapping Under the Influence here with a new project. I have used the Doodlebug Pumpkin Spice Collection to make a little recipe organizer, Thanksgiving planner um, thing for uh, the design team at Country Craft Creations. This is six by nine. It has a one and a half inch spine. Um, I've got just some of the odds and ends and the little uh, shape sprinkles and things and the stickers from the sticker sheet on the front here where I've kind of built a little scene with my bear in his mixing bowl and some little treats and things. When we open this up on this side, we have another cute little scene up here with um, some of the odds and ends. And this is loose all the way across here. What well, was? So that you can use this as a tech spot if you needed to. We've got a pocket down here for smaller recipe cards or coupons or something as you're planning. And then up here we've got an expanding, well three pockets, two expanding pockets and one that's a little more flat to store your recipes and things in. And these are sized to hold an, well I had it, where'd it go, there it is eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper that's folded in half because I don't know about you but most of the recipes I have are on eight and a half by 11 and this way you can just fold them in half and stick them in here and you'll be able to get a bunch of them in here because the pocket does expand out okay on this side we do have a small waterfall we've only got four little flaps here and it does go down instead of up the animals on this print it's just adorable and we are tying this off closing this off with a tie closure instead of a magnet the pocket flap is does have a magnet under there oh, for crying out loud and as you all know I'm bow challenged including tying bows just like this and of course because I'm on camera it's gonna be that much harder so we're not gonna tie it <laughs> Okay, inside we've got two side load pockets here for more recipes, pictures, whatever it is you may want to put in this album. Um, you know, I geared this more towards kind of Thanksgiving, but this would also be good for, you know, all your crock pot and instant pot recipes because it is that time of year that we all start, you know, making all those, you know, comfort food type things, um, that sort of thing. So we've got pockets there. And then on this back, I've got four flaps that open up out like this. You could put, you know, pictures of the kids helping you cook, um, you know, favorite pictures from Thanksgiving's past, you know, on the little flaps here, you could put, you know, a family picture in here. You could put, you know, a, a family recipe that you've had for, you know, years and years, you know, whatever you want to do. And then in the back here, we have a notepad and a pen, and we are actually making this notepad. This is a custom notepad. It is five and a half by six and a half. It has a little acetate front there, but we are going to make this from scratch. And the nice thing is this pulls out. So, you know, if you needed to replace it, you can. Um, and then there is another pocket on the side here that you could put, you know, some more recipe cards or whatever in that side. So, and then we've got just one of the petite prints on the back. So the tutorial will start here right after this. Thanks. All right, so let's get started. And I have a new camera that I ordered back in like April that finally showed up a couple days ago. So um, I think my color so far seems to look a little bit better. So this is good. All right, so we're gonna start two pieces of chipboard seven by nine and one piece seven by one and a half inches. We are going to wrap all of these using the easy wrap method. What is that piece for? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, I've got everything cut and sitting over here and I'm like not knowing what I'm even trying to do here. So we're going to start with our two cover pieces. And I do have my spacers from Country Craft Creations. So we have one inch and one and a half inches. And let me get my 
little pick thing here ready and ignore my crappy tape job on the back of this. I've got some weird roll of tape that I've been trying to use up so it's not taking up space and yeah. <laughs> it's okay. There we go. For some reason I like could cut a chunk out of I don't know what I did. It's okay. These things happen. All right. So we're going to go ahead and put that down. Did I not cut this right? What did I do? That should be... <laughs> No, I cut it right. For the cover, we want both of our one-inch spacers. <laughs> oh my god. Can you tell it's been a long week already? Oh my gosh, seriously. And it has been one of those weeks, like work and everything else. So, there you go. Alright, let's get our other one on here. And I will just go ahead and apologize too. I got my nails done yesterday and I think I got a relatively new lady because they are on the thicker side and they are like really long. So, and I don't usually get really long and I don't function well with them really long. So, but she was having a very hard time and like, the guy that was like the boss kept kind of coming and hovering over her that I really didn't want to say anything. So they're just long. It's okay. I will just go earlier than I normally do when I go get them filled next time and it'll get fixed. It's okay. But I did a totally different color that's not normal for me. So I'm not sure if I like it or not. It's pretty. I like the color. I just don't know if I like the color on me. But all right, I'm babbling. So this is our spine piece. I'm going to go ahead and put my spacers away. Maybe. Like not drop them on things over here. All right. Move my scoreboard for a minute. Let me find my... Impression glove. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and fold and burnish on all four sides. Okay, and again, we're going to do the same thing with both of our cover pieces. We are going to cut out our corners on all three pieces. And then we'll check and make sure we don't have anything hanging over that doesn't need to be there. Okay, 
So to check, we're just going to fold this over and see if there's anything sticking out over the edge here. In which case we will just trim that off. Kind of miter our corners as we go. So there's a better example. I think I'm liking this camera. That just focused right up for me there. And it seems, which I normally turn off the autofocus because it tends to kind of freak out as you're working, I guess. But this one seems to not be doing it as badly so far. So we'll see. are all nice and even. Okay, and we are going to do the same thing even on our spine piece. Um, if you've done my tutorials in the past, using the easy wrap method, we were wrapping the spine piece a little bit differently but at the october retreat um, a couple of different ladies had shown us how they'd been doing it using the same wrap method and it just creates a lot less bulk and it actually holds just fine because you're still putting that piece on the inside to reinforce on the inside so this does make that a lot easier we can just you know, assembly line our way through this and get it all trimmed and ready to go at once and not have to, you know, stop and go, oh, wait a minute, I have to do this piece differently. So, not a bad idea. Okay. Just about there. All right. So let me move the way here. Get all that off into my trash bin there. All right. So I'm going to grab my glue and my score tape. So for the spine piece, the only thing different you're going to do on this one is you're not going to wrap these two sides in, of course. You're just going to do, oops, for crying out loud. this one. I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing from my score tape. And I'm going to get my glue. And I should have cleaned this out beforehand. And I didn't get to it. So we're going to stop for just a second and get this tip cleaned out because I know I will regret it otherwise. So pipe cleaner, dry tip before you've tried to squeeze anything out of it. It does seem to clean it a little bit better. And then rag just to be on the safe side here. And all you do is just put it in there and kind of twist that around and it cleans all of that gunk out of your tip. Works quite nicely actually. And I'm just going to get anything off of this. It's still kind of there. Do the same thing there. Just wipe that off. And put this back on. And we should be good to go. Alright. So, we're going to run glue along the edge of that chipboard. 
and then in the space between the chipboard and the score tape. I'm going to come up and over, burnish that down, then do the opposite side. All right, so there's our spine piece. All right, so let's get our two cover pieces prepped. And I'm sorry, I probably didn't give the measurements on the paper to wrap these, and I apologize. Um, to wrap it, it's going to be nine by nine by eleven for the two cover pieces, and nine by four and a half for the spine piece. I apologize. Um, I will try and remember and put a note on the bottom of the screen. Um, but I know there are some of you that will go through and watch most of the tutorial and kind of make notes on sizes as you go and then go back and actually cut your stuff and then watch it again as you actually assemble. In which case you guys will be fine. <laughs> right. tape on my other one. I've got it in my hand. ahead and remove the backing from my score tape all the way around. the same thing we did before. I'm going to run glue along the chipboard and then in between the chipboard and the glue. Use the bone folder, push against the chipboard, and then bring it up and over and burnish it down. So again, along the chipboard, burnish it down. same way. Burnish, glue, burnish up and over. Okay. I'm going to 
up and over. All right. Let's take our spine piece. Take one more time. And I am going to take my bone folder and push, just run it along the edge of that chipboard. Okay, see how it's, it's making a very distinct crease? That's what we want for lining up our spine, our cover pages, our covers on our spine. I really know what I'm trying to say here, I promise. <laughs> okay. So we're going to put that down there. And I'm going to put a piece about an eighth of an inch away from the um, chipboard. You don't want it going all the way up against the chipboard because then you will see it on the spine of the book when you close it. We don't want that. That would not look good. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull the backing off of one side. So we will do this one side at a time. You want it good side up and good side up. And we are going to go glue in the middle between the two pieces of score tape. And then I am going to line this up on top of the spine, okay? I'm going to use my fingernail to guide it, pull it over, and when you feel it kind of drop off the chipboard, go ahead and put it down. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. start on top of the spine when we feel it drop off we're gonna push it down <clears throat> okay and I am just gonna turn it over I'm gonna burnish all of this down and I'm gonna burnish that chipboard in the middle to kind of push it down in between the two cover pieces okay and when you first turn it over it will be sticking up just a tiny bit that just gets it pushed down all the way. Okay, we are then going to cover this inside and reinforce it. This piece is six and seven eighths by five inches. I do use score tape on this just because once it's down, it's down. You don't have to wait for it to dry. You're not going to worry about it not going down all the way and bubbling when you go and bend the cover. So I can line it up. I'm going to turn it sideways. And I am going to start almost at the top. And then just push it down. Burnish over that. And then I am going to take my bone folder. And I am just going to work that crease as I bend that cover up. Okay? it around do the same thing on the other side and you just want to work that down into that crease and there's our cover all right and my autofocus just freaked out there so we're gonna turn that off all right I'm gonna set this aside for just a minute we'll grab our scoreboard we're gonna go ahead and Get our hinge prepped. We're not going to put it in the book yet. We're just going to get it scored and prepped. So our hinge is two and a half inches by six and three quarters. We are going to score this every half inch because there are only two pages in the book. That's all we need. So you're scoring half inch, one inch, one and a half, and two. We're going to turn this over so that your bumpy side is up. I am going to fold and 
burnish my first tab. Okay. And then I'm going to put my glue in. Fold, burnish that again. I'm going to do it initially just kind of with my finger while everything gets good and stuck. And then I will come back and do it with the bone folder. Okay, so that's your first hinge. This one's super easy because there are only two hinges. So we can actually just flip it around and do the opposite side. If we had more than two hinges, of course, we just keep moving across skipping the one in the middle, but since there's only two on this one, it makes it super easy. Okay. Okay, there we go. Then we're going to just fold up and over and burnish. Flip it the opposite up and over and burnish. And there you go. Okay. So there's that. We're going to set this aside for right now. And we are going to work on getting all of the interior pieces scored. Second, get all of this off of here because that's how I keep losing stuff. <laughs> it's by leaving that there. All right. So for the front inside, we are going to do an expanding pocket with a small pocket on the front. So for the expanding pocket, we need three pieces of cardstock, 10 and a half by nine and three quarters. With the With the ten and a half at the top of the scoreboard, you're going to score at five and a quarter. Okay, you're then going to turn this all the way around and score half an inch. Turn it all the way around again and half an inch. Okay, we're going to do this on all three pieces. So again, start with ten and a half at the top. Score at five and one quarter, turn it half an inch, turn it all the way to the opposite side, half inch again. are going to have a flap that's going to close down over this. Our flap is five and a half by eight and three quarters. With the five and a half at the top of the scoreboard, we are going to score this at three eighths of an inch. I'm sorry, three eighths, not five eighths. So I'm actually going to flip that over. undo what I just did. Okay, so three-eighths of an inch. No, I'm sorry, that was right. I'm, I am totally losing my mind. Oh my god. It's been one of those mornings. Okay, let's try this again. We are going to score it half an inch. <laughs> and then it's seven-eighths what I was trying to do. So half an inch and seven eighths of an inch. Okay. That's going to be our flap. And then the small pocket that's going to go on the front is three inches by nine and three quarters. 
get the nine and three quarters at the top, we're going to score it half an inch, turn it all the way around, and half an inch again. And then we're going to clip these pieces back together. Okay, this is going to be our front inside cover. The back inside cover is where we're going to put a little notebook that we are going to make from scratch, which is going to be really fun. It's really easy. And the other options, if you don't want to make the notebook from scratch, you can um, always buy a notepad at the dollar store and trim it down with, you know, an X-Acto knife to fit in the spot. So, um, that's what we're going to do. So, we're going to put that notepad on top of a pocket. So, this is 9 inches by 7.5. We're going to score at half an inch on three sides. So basically you're going to start on the 9 inch side, score half an inch, turn, half an inch, turn again. Okay. There's going to be two pieces that are going to be the bands that are going to hold our little notepad on um, the top of the pocket. So the back of the notepad is going to slide down through. So these are eight inches and why does this seem wrong to me I think it is okay so we're gonna score half an inch and then five eighths turn it that's gonna put it at hold on I think I measured this wrong wouldn't be the first time. So let me look at this here. I did. We're off by like a quarter of an inch here. So let me Okay, so this should have been seven and a half, not eight. So one and a half inches by seven and a half inches because the base of our notepad is six and a half so that would be what it's supposed to be so seven and a half by one and a half you're going to score it half an inch and then five eighths turn it and do the same thing on the opposite side so half an inch and then five eighths you're going to do that on both pieces So for our two pages on the inside, our page bases are going to be six and three quarters by 12. We are going to score both of these at six inches. Okay, so there's our page base. We're going to have two pockets on those pages. The pockets are going to be seven and three quarters by three and a half. We are going to score both of these. I promise there's two of them here. At half an inch. On all three sides. the one of the pages we're going to do some flaps that are all going to kind of overlap so you need four pieces that are four and a half by four with the four and a half at the top you're going to score at half an inch least we're going to do a little waterfall and this is going to be four and a half by six with your four and a half at the top of your scoreboard you're going to score a half an inch okay 
All right. So those are all good to go. All right, I am going to pause for just a second, grab some of my pattern paper, and then I will be right back. Okay, so before we get into the book assembly, we are gonna go ahead and do our little custom notepad. So what I have here, I have a piece of artisan that is two and a half by five and a half because our notepad's gonna be five and a half by six, so five and a half wide, six and a half long. I've got a piece of chipboard that is five and a half by six and nine sixteenths. So it is just a tad, tiny, tiny bit longer than my paper, okay? My paper is literally copy paper. So this was 20 sheets of copy paper that I have trimmed down to five and a half by six and a half so that I've got 40 sheets in my little notepad here, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with this little piece of artisan and we are gonna score this at one and seven eighths I'm sorry, one in three eighths and one in five eighths. I apologize. Okay. So this longer part is going to go on the back of the card of the chipboard. I'm going to go ahead and just burnish, fold that over. Okay. And I am going to just glue that on with um, just my normal art glitter. You can adjust how much of a top and bottom you have here. It's entirely up to you. Okay. Now, I am going to take my paper and my chipboard backing. I am going to stack this so it's good and even and I'm gonna get it even with the top of the chipboard. So you don't want it even with where this folds over because that's where our glue is gonna go that's gonna hold all of this together, okay? You want it even with your sides and you want it even with the bottom of your, actually not quite the bottom of your chipboard. Okay. So you can see there, it's even with the top of the chipboard, but it's not going over the top of the chipboard. Okay. It's even side to side. And all I'm going to do, and you want some heavier clips to do this with. If you've got clothespins, those will work, but these grip a lot better. If you've got binder clips, that would be awesome too. I just don't know where mine are right at the moment. Okay, so you're going to clip that on all three sides so that it stays where we want it to stay. Now, we are going to take our glue gun and we are going to put glue and we're not going to be stingy with it. We're going to put a thick line of glue in that quarter inch gusset. Okay. You don't want it to go over that score line. Okay, see how much we got going there? And then we are gonna fold this over. Hold this up, that is, not all the way over. And be careful that you don't burn yourself. I have burned myself with the glue gun enough times now, it's just kind of par for the course. Okay, so we're going to fold that over and we're just going to hold that for a minute and give that a minute to cool off. Okay, and I did get a little bit too much on this one end down here, but that's okay. We will work around it, okay? 
So once that has cooled off, if you did get too much, so you see here I've got it where it ran over. Okay. I am just going to take and just kind of roll that off, which is the nice thing about hot glue is you can do that. Okay. Now, this, except I really got too much, is going to fold over like so. And then we are going to, yeah, my pages spread just a tiny bit, which I did not want to happen, but that's okay. We can work around it. That will be one thing you want to watch for. See how the pages, here, hold on. Okay. Well, now my autofocus doesn't want to focus on it. Okay. This is not working for me. The pages spread just a tiny bit because some of that glue got down in between. If that happens, it's fine. It's not a big deal. It's just going to maybe make it a little bit more difficult to fold your top part of your pad over, but it's fine. Okay. That is something you just kind of want to keep an eye on when you're folding that top over so that that doesn't happen. But because of the way we're going to assemble this, it's not going to matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my 3 8 score tape because we're actually going to put let me actually take these off bear with me for just one second let me get them plugged before I forget we are actually going to put a little acetate front on this just to kind of protect our notepad in our book okay so I am going to take my bone folder push this over because like I said mine did kind of spread a little more than I wanted but that's okay and we're just going to fold that over and then I'm going to take my score tape add that on there so my acetate is five and a half by six and a half so it's the same measurement as my notepad I'm going to get my backing off of there. I'm going to line this up side to side. And here. And push it down. So then all I'm going to do beyond that is I will just take some of my paper. In fact, what I probably will do is take that little border right there. In fact, that's what exactly what we're going to do. Okay. point <laughs> I think it's six and a half no it's five and a half okay so we're gonna take and we're gonna cut this right there and then I'm gonna go to lost my little notepad there okay I'm gonna just with my scissors trim off that last little bit that needs to come off the edge here and then there we go we'll put that down wherever my 
score tape one again. And what's cool about doing this is you can make notepads any size you want. In fact, if you're really motivated, which I was not today, <laughs> you can even, you know, find printables online, design your own with whatever kind of list it is you're looking for. And print them, trim them, and then put them together. And then you end up with this cute little notepad that, if my glue had not run over as much as it did on that one point, you can just, you know, write what you need to write, pull your sheets out, just like any notepad that you're buying at the store, only this is a custom size. So I'm going to move that to the side for now because we don't need it right this second. And we're going to start on our book. So I'm going to start on the outside because I do have some ribbon out of my stash that we're going to use on this that I literally just had in my hand and now I've lost it again. There it is. Okay. Don't know where it came from. I think I actually got it in a swap, to be honest with you. I don't remember buying this one, but that means nothing. I have so much dang ribbon in a box in my closet here, I can't even tell you that I really just need to go through it and probably toss most of it because it's stuff that I bought years ago and I am never going to use. But that's okay. And I think we all have that kind of thing. All right, so what I'm going to do is get some of my score tape. I'm just going to find my center point here on both ends. And get my score tape down. And then get my ribbon down. going to go ahead and mat our front and back cover. So I do have this fun little pattern for the front. I've got the pretty green check for the spine and then I've got my brown and white buffalo check out of my petite prints to go on the back. Um, just deciding if I want to ink these. I think I do. So let's go ahead and ink our edges. a real precise inker. In fact, usually I'm a fairly messy inker, so it's entirely what you prefer. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do my little spine piece first. Okay, we'll do our back. So the new and and believe she has, Tammy has, um, the big package of the different colors of just the Buffalo Check Petite print, so not just what goes with this collection, but just the assortment. And they have the wood grain on one side, which is adorable, and then that Buffalo Check on the other side. Okay, then we get 
our front. And this, of course, doesn't have to just be a Thanksgiving planner. This could be you know, something to put all of your instant pot and crock pot recipes in because it's getting to that time of year that, you know, at least with me anyway, I don't know about you guys, but I do a lot of that this time of year. Okay, so then I've got my piece, which for some reason is too small on this inside. Hmm, I wonder what I did. That's very odd. Okay, so we're gonna cut it one more time. It happens. And I'll use that piece on something else. Because I do have another project kind of half planned in my head for this paper. go ahead and put our hinge down while we're here. In your hinge, you just want to center top to bottom, side to side. Which should be fairly easy because it's such a small one. So, all right, let's do our front inside cover first. So for the front inside cover, we have some expanding pockets with a smaller pocket on the front just to kind of hold like coupons or you know something, you know, if you've got smaller recipe cards, that kind of thing. So we've already scored our three pieces that are going to make up our expanding pocket. What we need to do on those now is on one side, you're going to cut that along the score line until you get to the middle score. Okay. So let me show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm starting up here at the point where I'm going to stop cutting and I'm going to miter that just ever so slightly. And then I am just going to cut right along that score line up to that middle point. So we're cutting out that, that side. Okay. We can do the same on the other side. three of these. cut to mat underneath the pocket because when the pocket is folded, which is why I had one of these cut because I wanted just to double check myself. Okay. When these are folded and stacked, they're going to go on top of here and you're going to have just a tiny bit that's going to stick out on the sides. Okay. It's up to you if you want to mat all the way down underneath these or not. Okay. 
If you don't want to, then you just need a strip to go across the top. So it's up to you. Um, before you mat any of that, however, we do need to put our flap down across the top. So that was the five and a half by eight and three quarters that I scored all wrong in the initially <laughs> because that's of course what I did. Okay, I am just going to miter the top ever so slightly. I'm going to very carefully try to fold on the right score line because I've got so many of them on here because apparently today I'm scoring challenged, not just measuring challenged because this one was wrong too. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, I'm going to turn that upside down so I can line this up where I want it. And because I did screw up those score lines originally, I'm going to go ahead and fold the other one as well when normally I would wait for our little gusset for our expanding pockets here. So now I need to decide if I want to use all of that piece and mat underneath this entire section or not. I kind of don't want to, so I think I am going to cut that down because this will come up and it's going to leave me about an inch and a half at the top that needs to mat it. So I am going to cut this down. and only use that top section. And we're going to go ahead and ink that and put it down. So because this is nine inches, we're going to cut this to eight and seven eighths. And then I went two inches because then it will cover enough coming down in here that it will go back behind that first pocket. I just love the little animals on the other side too and then I can use that other paper somewhere else in here or on the next project either one all right so let's go ahead and assemble our envelopes thing on the next two and then we'll put them together and the other thing you want to watch because we were cutting down that score line when you fold these before you glue them just kind of look and see if you've got too much hanging over an edge you will want to kind of clean that edge up just because it looks a lot nicer that way It's been three hours since my child ate lunch and he hasn't come begging for snacks. It's a miracle. <laughs> okay. We'll do our last one. Up 
before we um, put these down and attach these together, we are going to go ahead and mat the top edge of whichever pocket we're putting in front. I think I'm going to go with that one because it's the nicest looking of the three. And this piece is two and one eighth by um, seven and three eighths. I'm sorry, eight and three eighths, five eighths. Two and one eighth by eight and five eighths. <laughs> Go ahead and put this one down. Okay, and then we're going to put our pocket that's going down here on here as well. So the pocket was three by nine and three quarters. We are going to miter our corners on this. This is going down. It does not have a bottom gusset. It just has the two side flat side tabs. So it's going to go on here like so. We just want to make sure we're not hanging off the edges. I'm going to glue and we're just going to run a little line along the bottom because this pocket is not intended to hold a ton of stuff. That would be the other pockets. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is so this one will go all the way down flat on the back what we're going to do on the front of this one however is we are going to just do about a two inch wide strip of glue right smack in the middle you're going to line this up on top of it and push it down you're going to do it again this allows this pocket to expand without creating a ton of bulk with or gussets that are going to get smashed and that kind of thing and then once it dries you'll see this expands out very very nicely these are sized so that a normal sheet of copy paper folded in half will fit in these just perfectly Okay, so normal piece of paper, you can fold it in half, and that is going to fit right down in your pockets. If you wanted to notch all of these so it's a little bit easier to pull those in and out, you absolutely could do that. I thought about it and decided I really didn't want to do that in this case. Okay, so now we're going to get our adhesive all over the back of this. As for closure, I'm going to use a magnet. If you wanted to use ribbon to hold this closed, you would want to put the ribbon down on this bottom part before um, you put it down. But since I'm going to use magnets, it's not going to matter as much. Other than I think my magnet was supposed to attach in there, not down on the bottom. And I matted that, but that's okay because I can always cover my magnet with one of my odds and ends or a sticker or something. And that will work just fine. 
because I knew I was messing something up here. Not the first time either. <laughs> okay. Let me get that. Maybe. Where's my pokey tool? There it is. Aha, there we go. Alright, so I'm going to just push that down. Make sure we're good side to side. Okay. And then I have my mats cut. So my intention was this is going to go on the front. And our little pumpkin pie is going to go down here on the bottom. I think I like that. I think we're going to go with that. My alternative was to do this. I could flip this over and do that. I kind of like that, but I love all the little border pieces with the little animals and the this and that and the other. So we're going to do it that way. And we're going to do that one on the inside. And again, I am going with the buffalo check. Because I do love that one. decorate I will cover up my magnet there Whoops. this is why I don't ink because <laughs> I get going and then I forget oh I was inking my papers so I end up with a half inked book all the time you have no idea go on the top although that does look really nice I think I am gonna stick with my adorable little borders here just because I love them inside cover I did actually give you the wrong measurement this is nine by seven and a half not eight by seven and a half this pocket does run top to bottom and then our little notepad is going to sit on the top of it so I'm going to go ahead and miter my corners This pocket is going to go on here sideways. I do have my matting that we're going to put down before we put our pocket down. And I don't know what I'm matting the top of this one with yet, so we're going to leave it unmatted for right now. I don't know that the entire thing needs to be matted because it is underneath the, um, the notepad for the most part. 
Okay, so I've got a little one inch strip that's gonna go on this side. will kind of help with lining up your um, your pocket. Now, before we put this one down, we are actually going to put a little pen loop here. Okay, so I'm gonna figure out where I stuck my ribbon and I'm going to cut a little piece of that off that should be enough <coughs> excuse me and I'm going to take my pen I'm going to figure out about how much ribbon I need to go around it and about where I need that ribbon to go okay so since I know my pocket is going to start about here, it's going to come over to about here, I can go ahead and put this down because we're going to hook the end of our pin loop underneath our pocket. pen loop I am actually going to use some score tape just because I think I, I don't know I think ribbon kind of sticks better that way rather than trying to use glue um, that may just be me and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stick my ribbon together okay so I've got that score tape on that ribbon. I'm going to get my backing off. And then I'm going to turn that over and stick that together. So there's my loop. Okay. And then I'm going to get another little piece. I'm going to put it down about where my pin loop to attach. Okay. So we're going to bring that over there. Any extra score tape that you have, just kind of lift it up and pull it off just so that it doesn't interfere with anything that you may slide into this pocket, okay? So, fix that corner because it's not quite mitered where I want it. That's better. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this side, which if the pocket were opening to the top, this would be the bottom. In this case, it's going to be the left side of our pocket. I'm going to put that down. Okay. Make sure that's down where we want it. And then really, we can kind of pull this up and trim that off just a tiny bit. Just so it doesn't interfere with anything we may put into the pocket. put our sides down. Okay. Put those in and down. And again, this is another place where we could have notched this and it would have been probably really cute, actually. <laughs> I'm actually going to pull my pen out of here for 
now just because I don't want it in the way while I'm doing the rest of this. But there is our pocket. So now our little notepad is actually going to sit on top of the pocket. So um, enough of the pocket is showing we are going to end up matting this pocket. I just am undecided which pattern I really want to use on that. So our pocket is seven inches wide and seven inches high. So we're going to go six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. Okay. There we go. Whoops. Let's not do that. And then we've got our two bands that are going to go on top to hold that our little notebook's going to slide in between. So these were, what size were these? Eight by one and a half. Actually, I think they're seven and a half by one and a half. I apologize. And that might even be too big. It is. I literally cannot do math today. Holy crap. All right. These should be seven. No. Six and a half. Oh my god, really. Uh, not my day. No, six and three quarters. No, hold on. All right, I apologize. I'm having complete brain damage here. Okay, so it's five and a half. Five and three quarters. No, six and three quarters. Okay, I was right. Six and three quarters. I apologize, but at least it is an easy fix. So six and three quarters, and then we need to rescore our ends. All right, so six and three quarters, half inch, and then five eighths on each end. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. So we're going to go ahead, bend those over. And because it is only an eighth of an inch, it's going to kind of roll more so than like have a nice flat gusset, and that's fine because our little notepad is going to slide in here. Okay, so if you made my camping planner, you will have an idea of how we're going to do this. And this, I think, is the easiest way to do this. In my opinion, you might have something that works for you that's better. It's entirely up to you. Okay, I like to slide those into the back of the notebook itself and kind of fold them over and see about where I want those placed. Okay. I am then going to put my glue on all four of those little tabs. Flip this over. 
figure out about where I want it to go. And then all you have to do is make sure those tabs are pushed in all the way. Make sure it's straight, which right at the moment I am not straight. That's okay. And then down you go. So those get in there exactly where you need them and you can slide your little notepad in and out of your book. There you go. All right. So now let's work on our two page bases. The page bases were six and three quarters by 12. All we're doing is bending these in half. And then we'll put them onto our hinge. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and decorate and assemble these before you put them on here, you absolutely can do that. It's just fine. We're not doing anything super complicated um, that you couldn't do it outside the book or with them in the book. But I know a lot of you are more comfortable decorating your pages outside the book than inside the book. So I'm going to go ahead and put the pages in. And if you decorate them first and then put them in, you're still going to, have to do the same process. All I'm doing is I'm pushing this page up against my hinge, folding it over on top, making sure I'm lined up so that I'm all the way at the bottom of that hinge. Then I am putting my adhesive on this side. Okay. And fold this over. Fold it over, push it down. Okay. We're going to fold back the opposite direction, push that down, and then we're going to do our line of glue here. If you want to leave the top open, I'm going to go ahead and leave these open. I might want to stick something inside here, I don't know. Maybe I have another recipes. Maybe I have pictures that I want to stick in here. I don't know, but we're going to leave the tops open. You can seal them off if you want to. There's your first page. And the same thing on the, on the next one. Once I erase my measurements off of it, which is much easier to do when it's not in the book. Because Lord knows I've tried to do it the other way. <laughs> So again, we're pushing this in here, lining it up and putting our glue down. And then fold, whoops. You know, let's not, let's not let it slide. I'm gonna fold that over. And we're gonna come back the other way. Press that down. Need any additional glue in here? We can go ahead and stick that in there. It's not going to hurt anything. Other than mine doesn't want to stick for some silly reason, but that's probably just me. And then again along the bottom. Because the other th cool thing about doing them this way, if you want your opening on the top of your pocket to only come down that far, you just put glue all over the rest of it and then you can control how deep that pocket is very, very easily. Okay. All right. So yes, these are much smaller pockets than what the width of the book is. That is intentional. Okay, so there's our pockets. I'm gonna start on this inside portion beforehand just because this one's going to be super easy. We just have pockets that mirror each other that are going to run lengthwise. Okay. So these are the seven and three quarter by three and a half inch pieces. I'm just going to miter both of my pockets. And 
fold and burnish all of our tabs. edge of our page put that down and then we will do our two tabs on the side literally nothing wants to stick down for me today holy crap really weird. I've not had that happen. It's got to have something to do with how dry it is in here today. The air is really super dry because we've had, of course, to turn on the furnace because it's been cold at night. Because it is Utah after all, and that's what happens this time of year. Sides actually, I think, okay. All right, let's, let's do our other side. This will probably be easier if we don't have our little notepad in here, honestly. my matting cut for this. So for the pockets we've got I believe there are two and seven eighths. Yes, two and seven eighths by six and five eighths. And then I've just taken the rest of that sheet, split it in half, turned it over, and that's what's going to go down right here. So let's go ahead and get these inked. do the pocket matting I think I am gonna do this bottom first slip that just ever so slightly inside the pocket get it lined up where it needs to go Love the little leaves on this, they're so cute. Okay, and then on the top.
So there's those. And we of course can decorate, you know, on the tops of these here. Okay, the back side of that, and you can do these in in either order. You could put your waterfall on this side and this other little flappy thing I'm doing on this side, I'm gonna put it on the back here. So this is our four flaps that are the four and a half by four. We are gonna go ahead and fold those and burnish on all four of those. And what we're going to do with these is these are going to go around like so. So they're all going to kind of overlap in the middle. And when you open it all the way up, then you've got a nice big spot in the middle for pictures or whatever. upper outside corner okay I'm gonna turn go here is open it's gonna open up like so we're gonna go ahead and put our pattern paper down here I don't know if I want the donuts up on the back side of each of those I am gonna mat those with the petite prints I just need to decide if I'm using the flower side or the grid side I do the donuts, I could do the grid side. I do the polka dots, and I think I want the flower side. Hmm, decisions, decisions. I think I want the polka dot side. and put this piece down inside before we put it in you want to make sure that all of these are going to fold in that this isn't you know cut too big you know what placement of one of these isn't you know slightly off whatever the case may be just to make sure everything closes up the way you want it to This piece is five and seven eighths by six and five eighths. Okay, so that one's gonna go, that one's gonna go, this one's gonna go, and then that one's gonna go. So 
we need all of this to stay closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab magnets, apparently, that are not over there where they're supposed to be. one on this side. I'm going to put that in this corner here. Okay, open those two out of the way. And it's going to come down on that piece that's the opposite side. go. So when this is all folded together, that will hold it closed. You could use ribbon again if you wanted to. I don't want to, so we're using a magnet. So now I have got my four little mats and I just need to decide, am I going to do this with these little guys on the front? that actually like this this and then this or do we use these guys on the front and put those on the inside so then it would instead it would be like so Nope, I think they're going to go on the front. So let's go ahead and get our orange ones down. want to mat the back side of these you absolutely do not have to they would have been just fine with no matting breaks my heart because I love the owls. 
when my son was a baby, I used to call him my little owl because he had the most impossibly huge blue eyes and he would sit like when you'd hold him. He wouldn't like look up at you, like tip his head back or anything like that. It would just be his little eyes and he'd look up at you. I've got pictures of it somewhere that I did a layout with. It was just absolutely the cutest thing ever. But I always called him my little owl. I did with that layout. I did a really cute layout of him doing that. <laughs> One of the few layouts I've done because I am not a layout person at all. As I'm sure most of you know. <laughs> Actually this will work because then I can do use some of the little odds and ends on the places that you see that are not underneath. It could be really cute. There we go. All right. Oh yeah, I like that much better. Okay. So let's get that folded over and let's go to our front. So on our front, we're actually going to do a little waterfall. So our pages for our waterfall are four and a half by six. So they'll be four by six. When they're finished so if you are putting a few little pictures in here you know I've got a picture again of my son on Thanksgiving when he was like a year old and I'm in the kitchen on Thanksgiving you know cooking something I don't even know what and he was sitting on the floor with a bowl and a wooden spoon and just banging and banging and banging and having the absolute best time ever and it was just adorable so my plan and again this is up to you how you want to do this my plan was to do kind of a reverse waterfall so this is going to open down as opposed to up um this i am actually going to use a ribbon for to close it so let me get my and the end of my tape first off would be helpful. Let me get my end down on here. Oh, that should be enough. And we'll get the other side in a minute. For now, we're going to build our little waterfall. And it is little. There's only four pages. wanted the waterfall to go the other direction, go for it. Okay. All right, so that's going to go up like that. Go ahead and get my score tape up there for the other side. So I do need to cut matting for in here. I did not get that one cut and that's okay. For the front of the waterfall, 
I just have my other pieces because that back page was four by four. So I just cut the rest of my little, I'm sorry, three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths pieces. And then I've got another little piece just to mat next to them. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do there. I am not matting the back side of these. stretch now. Okay. All right. So I will figure out what I'm going to map that part with. I might use the rest of that one page. Where to go. <laughs> I don't know. I'll figure it out and get that matted and get a little bit of decorating done. And then we are all finished. So I'll be back with a final walkthrough with the cover and the rest of the inside. Okay, so I have gone through out of the way so I don't stick it where it doesn't need to go and I have done my decorating on the inside this is the only one I really put down on here and I do have it let open on one end in here and this is why I love the odds and ends I've kind of built 
a little seam, and this is all loose, so you can actually use this as a tuck spot, okay? Hit our magnet underneath that little sticker that I backed on some of the um, scraps of the brown artisan. Same thing with the little tabs here, just because I thought they looked good there. And here I've just got two of the stickers again that I've backed on cardstock, used a couple of the epoxy stickers, the um, sprinkles they call them, and then I've got a couple of them here just on some of the leaves. And then on this back one I did just do a little bit with um, some of the odds and ends here, and then I used one of the stickers on the top of our acetate for um, our notepad. So, and then we've got, of course, our pocket that's underneath there, okay? So, I'm working on the front now. And just to kind of show you how to work with the odds and ends. So, I've got this piece. Which way am I doing this, actually? I'm going to do it that way. So, this is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. I'm putting a five by seven on top of that. And I did use foam tape on this, so there's a little bit of dimension there. And then I'll use foam tape on the back of this once we get this kind of decided how we're going to do this. So I think I am going to take this little happy harvest got here. And I'm going to cut off that little tail that makes it look like a little, um, like, uh, I want to say thought bubble, but not that, like a, you know what I mean. I'm drawing a total blank on what it is that you call that. Like in comic books when they're talking and they have the little bubble above their head. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to back that on some brown cardstock and then fussy cut around it. Or not, because of course my glue has clogged up on me again. And that just helps it to kind of stand out a little bit when um, you're putting it down on your background here. And it doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so we've got that. Oh, that's really bad though. <laughs> This is why I don't usually do this on round things. I cannot cut a circle even following along the edges of another circle to save my life. Yeah, it's slightly better. It's good enough. I don't care. All right, so what I've got pulled out here, so I've got this cute little bear with the mixing bowl, and I think he will go quite nicely with what we're trying to do here. And then I think I'm going to take some more of our little word stickers here. So I think I'm going to take So Blessed, I'm going to take Give Thanks and Thankful and Yummy, and just a few of these, and I'm going to do the same thing again. I am going to back them on some of my scraps of brown and just kind of stack them, and they're going to go off to the side over here. The center, we're just going to kind of build up the little bear and some little treats and goodies and things here out of our odds and ends. And I had these all separated and then I got digging around through them and now they're a mess. <laughs> but that's okay. We will get it figured out here. Oh, that's a cute cinnamon bun. Let's see here. Got another little pie slice. I think we'll use him. He's a little donut. Ooh, there's the entire pumpkin pie. Let's see, what else have we got here? Oh, I'll grab a pumpkin. And... Oh, there we go. A little cider and the hot chocolate are cute, too. So, just so we've got some options that we can kind of play with. So, when you are either trying to build a scene or you know, use several odds and ends in one project. And I think I am going to use this other one. What I like to do is just kind of, you know, pull out uh, several options, more than I'm actually going to end up using, and just kind of lay them on here and see what looks good. So we've got our little bear. 
We're going to put him in the middle. We're going to put this little pie over here, maybe. We're going to tuck those little preserves back over here. We've got our little drink with our apple spice there. For a minute. Kind of do that there. And then once we get our other little things on that side, I think that's actually going to be good. All right, so now I'm going to just flip these over like we're eventually going to put them down. I'm going to start with my bear. And I am going to get some foam tape on the back of my little bear here. And it tears okay, but it does not tear as well as I would like. over the top and I'm going to go ahead and put him down. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this here. I might use that somewhere else now. Okay, so our next little layers, since this one's going on that outside edge, we can just go ahead and just do it just like that because it's not going on top of the bear. And this would be a good time too if you've got a cricket or a silhouette or something and you wanted to cut like a little title for this you absolutely could do that and that would be just adorable so i'm not going to go to that today i've got some other stuff i need to do with my cricket here in a little bit and i don't think i want to add a title to mine Okay, so this one is kind of sitting up on top here, just a little bit. In fact, he was supposed to be, Let's see if I can get him up without making a mess. I can because I didn't push him down good. Thank goodness. He's supposed to go up just a touch right there. Okay, there we go. That's better. All right, so this little guy, we are actually going to do another row of foam tape. So he's going to sit up just a little bit higher. here and he sits just up above those so this little guy is going to go over here to this end actually he's going to go right there so we're going to do the same thing with him now since this one's going to overlap the bear a little bit more I don't want anything on that side all the way over there yet actually at all because he is going to sit just a little bit on top of that bear. So now I'm actually going to turn and go the other way because it's going to be a little bit easier. Okay. So we're going to put him over here. I'm going to put him up just a touch. Okay, and then this little guy is going to go over on this side. So this time, we're going to go towards the middle here. Get our backing off. Layer two. And I am using the big roll of the foam tape, which is a little bit thinner than the small roll, and it's definitely thinner than the foam squares. Um, normally I would do this with the foam squares just because there is more dimension to them. 
However, because this is something that would be actively used, I don't want to get too crazy with the dimension on it. Because you don't want all of your little stuff on the front here getting messed up as the book gets used. Okay. All right. So there we go. Now let me find one of my scraps. And let's figure out. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to go family. We're going to go autumn. We're going to say thankful. And then pumpkin. And then let's go with can't decide if that's nope, that one's gonna get lost. Well yeah, maybe. No, no, actually it doesn't. Okay. So now I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut down that side first. And then I'm gonna cut around these. So I'm leaving just a little bit of a border. And I think I am going to leave them all attached together like this, as opposed to cutting them out individually. You could actually do it either way. over here and then I do still need something kind of up there so what I think I'm gonna do before I put that down I am gonna take this little border strip right here and figure out how long I need it to be so it needs to be trimmed right about there so now this I can do it flat or I can pop it up and I'm actually gonna do it flat okay there we go and then we'll do these over here I am gonna pop those up as well Absolutely adore. And it's my because they're just cute. this 
one, I am going to take one of my little bees. We're just going to put him there. And we're going to grab some of these other little leaves and just kind of fill in. And there we go. I think that's good. So now I'm going to run my foam tape on the back of this. not want to cooperate with me today. So now we'll go back to fighting with the scissors. And this is why my scissors get yunky. <laughs> right here, you're witnessing it firsthand how I ruin my scissors. All right. Okay. We are just going to center that. I still don't want that on there, so I'm going to just set that aside. And there we go. There is our project. So I hope you make this. If you do, by all means, please share it on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations and also on my channel. Um, I'm sorry, my Facebook page, Scrapping Under the Influence. And I'll see you guys later. Yeah.